What's up everybody? This is Egon Russia. I'm, I'm here with a very special friend of mine, Moscow photographer. And we're going to be discussing with Eddie here about his journey from Texas to Russia and becoming the real Moscovite. I think you are a real Moscovite already. Of course, you're yeah, more Moscovich. than me. That the Moscovich. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, I'm a foreigner traveling from the West to Russia, filming the exceptional country of Russia, St. Petersburg, Moscow and tons of places. Subscribe now and also do, do yourself a favor, subscribe also to Moscow Photographer Channel. You can see the link right below in the uh, title. We're gonna go inside this Ismailova Kremlin. Let's go check it out. I fell in love with a girl and I fell in love with Russia. Typical American, always selling something. They will literally take the shirt off their back and give it to you. <laughs> you know, marriage in Russia is entirely bureaucratic. No, I'm an immigrant. I am an immigrant to Russia now. So in Russia, Men are expected to be men. What about the money? <laughs> what about it? Russians are afraid of spices. Yes, I said it, and if you're Russian, I'm sorry. Washington doesn't necessarily represent Americans. I get a lot of negativity from some folks who have never even left their mom's basement. But it doesn't have that hot. The only Mexican beer imported to Russia it's Corona. For those of you who are interested in maybe coming to Russia, here's what I would recommend that you pack. What did I bring when I moved to Russia? When the sanctions hit, uh, Russia had an oh shit moment. All right, we're now in the Ismailova, I think. This is Ismailova and we're gonna go to super awesome place. You've been there before, I've been there before, but you guys are gonna love it even more with two, two of your favorite YouTubers in the one scene. First off, who are you and uh, what's your story? So. My name is Eddie. I am the Moscow photographer from Texas. And yes, I was born and raised in Texas. So I've been living here in Moscow for about a year and a half. I'm married to a wonderful uh, Russian wife and uh, I make YouTube videos. Maybe you've seen one or two. If you haven't, go check them out. You'll find the link down below. So Eddie and uh, Texas, now here in Moscow, how did you end up in Russia and Moscow out of all places. Well, I met my wife back in 2017 on Facebook. And in 2018, I traveled to Russia for the very first time. And uh, as they say, I fell in love with a girl and I fell in love with Russia and uh, with Moscow as well. So now fast forward a few years and now we are married and we make our home here in Moscow. So the road from Texas to Moscow is a long road. It started in 2020 when I proposed to my now wife and I was getting ready to move here to Moscow and something happened. You may have heard of it, it's called COVID. Shut the whole world down. So for two years, we couldn't travel. And so finally, fast forward till 2022 and I arrive at Shadimitiva Airport on February 23rd and we all know what happened on February 24th. It has changed the world dramatically. The relationships between East and West countries has been, if you ask me, damaged, changed for sure. It affects me, it affects my wife, it affects Russians, it affects Americans. And it was because of that reason, I decided that I wanted to start a YouTube channel to show my family and my friends back in Texas that a lot of the stories that, th that they were hearing about Moscow, about Russia, were just propaganda. And nothing, nothing was happening here. Everything was safe. Everything was normal. So I started my YouTube channel as a way to share stories about my life here in Russia, mainly for my family and friends. And now, thank God, my family and friends has expanded to over 12,000 subscribers. I hope that if you are not a subscriber and you are watching this for the first time, please subscribe. Typical American, always selling something, always. What about the friends that you showed the reality? Do they call you a propagandist? Do they believe you? Or what are the, the reactions that uh, I know can come up <laughs> among the people that watch only certain truth? So it's interesting because you know, my family and friends really don't say anything to me. So I really don't need, I don't even know if they watch my channel. They probably don't. But 
Uh, they don't say anything negative to me about it. You've been living here for like four years on off? Off and on for about four years, yeah. What are the biggest culture shocks of as an American Oof. In, uh, in, in, well, in Russia? You know, the, the, the biggest hurdles are going to be language. And if you're not prepared to read Cyrillic, if you're not prepared to at least know a few words so that you can convey hello, goodbye, please, thank you, and so on, uh, it might be a little difficult for you. But I find that uh, Russians are very accommodating and they will help you if they know that you are at least trying to learn the language they will literally take the shirt off their back and give it to you. They are that uh, giving and that compassionate. <laughs> See what I mean? But is that actually a, like a difference with America? Americans would not do that to a stranger. Good question. So I lived in an area of Texas where we had a large immigrant population from Mexico. And so as you know, primary language in Mexico is Spanish, primary language in America is English. So these two cultures sometimes clash, even though they've had close relations for hundreds of years. But still, if a Mexican comes into the United States and starts speaking broken English, many times Americans will look down upon this person instead of wanting to help them, they'll look at them as an immigrant, possibly as something less than they are. And as an immigrant here in Russia, I don't see that same attitude from Russians as I would see from some Americans toward immigrants in America. What about Caucasus area people which in Russia? Now, the Caucasus region, these are my people because I am Caucasian like Armenia Caucasus yeah da, da, da. Uh, you mean like the yeah I'm, people. I'm I'm Caucasus I'm, ah, I'm Caucasian yeah, yeah, now I got it so with regard to uh, people from the Caucasus regions you know this these are my people these are Armenians Georgians and uh, people from the South Caucasus regions of uh, Russia Uzbek Tajik. Uzbek Tajik yes and so we share uh, some similarities in culture between uh, their culture and the Mexican Spanish culture. And so to me, this is home. I love the food. I love their customs. And uh, plus, I look like them. So when I'm there, I feel like home. You were married actually in Russia, in Zox, as what? they say in Russia. So what's that experience like? And uh, I know Russia is a bureaucratic country. Is there any, uh, you know, surprises you want to tell us or positive surprises? It's your choice. You know, marriage in Russia is entirely uh, bureaucratic. Marriage in Russia, unlike in the United States, usually get married in a church. But in Russia, you get married in a bureaucratic government office. <laughs> and basically, you sign a piece of paper that says, I'm married to this person. So marriage in Russia, when you're in this government office, you know, there's, there's really not a lot of love. There, there's not a lot of closeness. It's really just business of signing the piece of paper. But after you go from Zags and you go to your uh, reception, this is where the fun and the happiness and the love happens. But uh, yeah, a wedding is a wedding. I don't care what country you're from. It's all about families coming together. It's about love. It's about happy feelings. And as a wedding photographer back in Texas and wedding photographer now in Moscow, it's my, I love weddings. Happiest day of anybody's life. You do know that you have also the uh, the Orthodox wedding thing, which is like uh, they can be two separate things uh, fulfilling each other. Meaning you go to Zax and then you go to so to speak in front of God and do the same thing. But it's like very traditional and 
So uh, I would add that there's this part as well. But in the United States, so marriage, a lot of marriages happen in churches. And after the church ceremony, somewhere uh, in the church, you sign a document mm. that's exactly similar to what we signed at Zags, but without the religious ceremony. So it's all the same thing. It's all good. And here we are, guys. This is Ismailovo Kremlin. This is, I think, one of, well, a, a lot of tourists like to come here. Even Eddie, who's not a tourist in Russia anymore. No, I'm an immigrant. I am an immigrant to Russia now. What about the American versus Russian family traditions or like man-woman uh, relations? Is there, what's the biggest differences that you want to tell us, tell the viewers? So in Russia, men are expected to be men. And it should sound strange for a Westerner to be saying this, but it really means that in Russia, not only are you expected to be a man, you better be a man. And what this means is you open doors for the ladies. You carry her bags. It means you pay for things. This means that you are, you are the man, you are the head of the household and you are given permission. And this is something that is different from the West is that you are given permission to be the man. And what this means is that in the West, there's many times where if you maybe try to help somebody, a woman, uh, maybe with her bags and you didn't ask, you may be rebuked for that and say, what are you doing? I don't need help. In Russia, they don't even have to ask. It's expected. So there is a big difference. Chivalry is alive and well in Russia. And uh, I love it because this is how I naturally am. And so I'm just being me. What about the money? <laughs> what about it? So what are some of the uh, more traditional things that are required of a man? Well, to bring flowers and uh, you are expected to pay, you know, pay for dinner, pay for going out, things like this. This is just natural. A lot of times if you're dating in back in America, many times, uh, you know, the woman might turn to the guy and say, uh, are we going to split this or uh, no, I don't want you paying for me. And I think that there is some expectation on the woman's part that if the man pays, then he's expecting something. And here in Russia, the woman isn't expecting anything other than for you to pay. <laughs> there, it doesn't mean anything else. But I think in the West, there's some connotation that, well, hey, I bought you dinner, so now you owe me something. Totally different here. What about uh, your, your, well, previous home? Do you miss home? States you know, or... yes, th there are some things that I miss about Texas. First of all, I have two children. Uh, they're adult children, but they're still my kids. They're still babies to me and I do miss them. So, uh, yes. The other thing I miss is authentic, traditional Tex-Mex foods. Foods that I just can't get here. Uh, because Russians are afraid of spices. Yes, I said it, and if you're Russian, I'm sorry if I insulted you, but you guys, y'all just don't know spices, man. What about Georgian food? Not spicy enough? Georgian food is very, very good. Vikuzna, очень vikuzna, but it still doesn't, it, it, it's spicy, but it doesn't have that hot yeah. bite that I want as a Mexican. I was just yesterday asked in a stream that can you get a good uh, tortilla or tacos? I said it's it's not popular in Russia. In St. Petersburg, Moscow, you can. There probably is few, but compared to what other cuisines, how much are they represented? Ital the Russians' favorite, Italian, Georgian, uh, sushi, uh, much many more. Uh, t t way over under, uh, way underrated. Well, well they're, yeah, they're, they're, those cuisines are much more po uh, popular. And, and those countries also. And but. the countries as well. But Mexico, Latin American food, not that popular. It does exist. There are several good restaurants here in the Moscow area where you can get authentic Mexican cuisine. But however, the spices aren't exactly mm. accurate 
because either they just can't get them or I don't know. And the only Mexican beer you can get, the only Mexican beer imported to Russia is, what is it? Ah, it's Corona. Well, Corona is real Mexican oh, beer. However, it's it's like a cheap beer, you know? I, I, I love it. I, I'd rather have a different Mexican beer, but it's That's all right. the best. Why should I try it? Uh, I like a Dos Equis and I like uh, a Modelo would be good. Yeah. Are there like lagers? Like, or is it like, uh, do they have uh, Modelo is, a, is like a lager and your uh, Dos Equis is more like a, it's, it's heavier than Corona, but it's still considered maybe like a light beer. We're going to find maybe here in Ismail or Kremlin. Yeah, we well, some beer at least. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that. Right, so Eddie, you moved to uh, Russia from Texas. Did you bring all your belongings? And if you did, uh, or whatever you did took, what's that process like to somebody who actually plans? There's gonna be a lot of good tips. And uh, yeah, Russia is trying to make itself very welcoming to people with traditional values and etc. So please tell us. Very good question, Igor. When I first moved here to Russia, I brought two suitcases full, 23 kilos one suitcase full of camera equipment, one suitcase full of uh, clothes, and my cat. So yes, I had a nine, I think it was an eight, yeah, I think an eight kilo cat from Texas, my cat Titan. And uh, he's the most important thing that I brought uh, from Texas. But for those of you who are interested in maybe coming to Russia, here's what I would recommend that you pack. And that's absolutely nothing. Come with as little as you possibly can. Close for maybe three, four days. Travel as light as you can. And bring your absolute, you know, what you must, must have. Other than that, buy everything else here. Especially if you come in the winter, buy your winter clothes here. Because winter clothes for the U.S. are not the same as for Russian winter. Buy your winter clothes here. Uh, your summer clothes and all that other stuff, you can buy it here too, and you can buy it fairly inexpensively. So come with very minimal clothing. Bring your absolute precious possessions. I brought my camera equipment because my camera equipment earns money for me. So that's why I brought. So you got to prioritize. And technology or equipment in Russia can be even more expensive than in the West. It, that is very true, although AliExpress is your friend if you're uh, into technology. But this is a good opportunity, and, and I will thank Igor for this opportunity to come and, and uh, meet with you, his audience. And I want to tell you about something exciting that I have uh, just started recently. You know, President Putin has recently signed a decree that uh, makes a path forward for immigration into Russia a little easier. And because of that decree, and because of the flood of questions that I have uh, received from my viewers, I have uh, started a personal concierge and travel consulting service. And if this is something that you might be interested in, if you're wanting to come to Russia, and you're thinking you may want to live here, I encourage you to visit first and visit the website. This is www.worryfreerussia.com. And uh, go in there, look at the website, and your first consultation with me, 15 minutes, is absolutely free. You can see if the service uh, that I provide uh, may be good for you, may be right for you. I think there's a lot of interest from people in the West in wanting to move to Russia, but first, I suggest you visit. This has been a great day with Eddie, Moscow photographer. And uh, of course, in this beautiful scenery, I want to thank you so much for being and talking to us. My pleasure. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed to Moscow Photographer, the link is below. Subscribe for more content from Eddie. And of course, if you're new to my channel, haven't still subscribed, I'll do the same for me. I see you guys in the next episode somewhere in Russia, maybe Moscow, maybe St. Petersburg, and maybe Voronezh or somewhere else. See you guys, Eddie, later on, right? We'll see you. Yes, we will. Fuck up. Loud Russians. Hmm? Loud Russians. <laughs>
I'm, I'm, I am Peter Burgess. Can you say that? Yes. Peter Burgess. Peter Bergen. Peter Bergen. Oh man, the good stuff here. But you, you've heard. Anyway, Washington doesn't. So, so what we have seen in America is that Washington doesn't necessarily represent Americans. I hope that if you are not a subscriber and you are watching this for the first time, please subscribe and uh, give a like and share this. Share this video with your family and friends.